All right, right on top of uh, this news bulletin, I want to take our viewers through where India stands in just sheer terms of numbers on its fight against the coronavirus. Let's look at uh, the numbers that India has recorded till now. Overall, this is what it looks like. The import of numbers stands at 20,471. India has crossed the 20,000th mark. We stand at total corona positive cases at 20,471. In total, India has recorded 652 deaths, the worst hit states. Number one continues to be the state of Maharashtra, where the total cases have gone up to 5,221. The lion's share of the deaths are coming in from the state of Maharashtra, which stands in terms of the death count at 251. Gujarat has now overtaken the state of, or the city state of Delhi. Gujarat now stands with total positive cases of 2,272. The death in Gujarat have now soared to 95 due to the coronavirus. Till yesterday, Gujarat was at number three, now has overtaken Delhi. Delhi now in total positive cases stands at number three with 2,156 recording 47 deaths. Till now, this data stands collated just about half hour back till about 6.30 p.m. on April 22nd. So this is what it looks like where India stands on its fight against COVID-19. I want to now shift focus. There was one incident which pretty much added a huge toll to the import of positive cases in terms of numbers. That was one event which took place in Nizamuddin where the Tablighi Jamaat was concerned. Today, Maulana Saad, the man who was apparently on the run, the Tablighi Jamaat chief, has opened up about the Nizamuddin Markaz congregation in his first media interview. In the interview, Molana Saad maintains that he was not in hiding, was in quarantine as per doctor's advice. He also claims that a Markaz team had informed the police on March 24th about people from outside Delhi being stranded at Markaz building, adding that a letter giving details of the meeting was submitted to authorities. Molana Saad claims that the Markaz received, did not receive any evacuation order. It would have adhered to it if it had received any evacuation order. He further goes on to say that the Markaz, the Tablighi Jamaat at Nizamuddin itself had actually procured transport and buses to move the people, but they were not allowed to do so. I want to now connect to my colleague Munish Pandey, who's joining us live on the first interview of Molana Saad. Munish, give us the facts on this. Till now, Molana Saad apparently on the run. He says, I've always been in quarantine. The authorities knew of it. What's the update on that? On the other hand, he says till 23rd of March, we were asking authorities to move us. They refused. We organized our own transport, but they refused to move us. What are the details vis-a-vis -vis of what we know from the police? Well, Priti, in the interview, Maulana Saad has maintained that uh, Marcus or Tablighi Jamaat has had no connection with any political activities. They have not been into any scrutiny of uh, intelligence agencies. They had nothing to do with any terror activity, but now their image is being maligned over the uh, event which happened in Marcus. Now, as far as the authorities are concerned, they claim that, uh, you know, the uh, claims by uh, Maulana Saad is not true. Before March 23rd, there were two notices given to Marcus to vacate and evacuate the headquarter of Marcus in Nizamuddin, but it was not done. Also, there was an audio in which Maulana Saad himself was uh, heard saying that there is no need to evacuate that place, there is no need to go outside. And it, it encouraged people due to which many of them who tested later positive were inside the Marcus till um, March 31st. So as of now, it is allegation versus cross allegations uh, uh, because uh, the crime branch has made it very clear that they want to question uh, Maulana Saad face to face. He has not submitted his medical report that whether he is COVID-19 negative or positive. He claims that he is in quarantine, but he has not appeared before the agency. Both ED crime branch wants him to interrogate, but he has not uh, disclosed his location or he has not come out clean before the agencies. Back to you. All right, so once again, a saga of claims and counterclaims and uh, Trust India today to get you the exact true story. So is the police hiding something or is this Molana who till now was apparently on the run actually trying to spread misinformation by saying that he was only in quarantine and the authorities knew exactly where he was? 
We'll keep getting you updates, but I want to just shift focus right now to a state which is recording, unfortunately, the highest number of corona positive cases. Maharashtra continues to remain the worst hit by coronavirus with almost 25% of India's cases reported from the state alone. An inter-ministerial team from the centre is in Mumbai and assessing the situation in Dharavi, the hotbed of the outbreak. Maharashtra Health Minister Rajesh Tope is accompanying them. India Today is tracking the inside details of centre's assessment of COVID outbreak in Mumbai. Now, according to sources, Dharavi and Govandi remain a concern, while the situation in Varli Kolivara has improved. The centre's team also met Chief Minister Udhav Thakare yesterday. Another team from the centre is visiting Pune. The entire city is now completely in shutdown mode. Meanwhile, there is a COVID scare at Chief Minister Udhav Thakare's official residence at Varsha in Malabar Hill after two police women tested coronavirus positive. अभी containment strategy, cluster containment strategy का जो protocol है, वो follow करना यही मुझे लगता है सबसे important काम होता है, ये हम काम कर रहे हैं। जो आप लोगों ने अभी तक प्रयास किए हैं, क्या central की जो ये team आई है, वो आश्वस्त हुई है उससे? Hundred percent कुछ छोटे-मोटे सुझाव जरूर हैं, वो सुझाव के ऊपर हम जरूर ध्यान देके खासकर quarantine facilities बढ़ाने का काम हम धारावी के लिए specially करेंगे। यहाँ का कंटेनमेंट स्ट्रेटजी एक्जेक्टली फॉलो करना जैसा कि भाई यहाँ के जो भी हाई रिस्क कॉन्टैक्ट्स हैं उनको आइसोलेट करना यही सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज है पेशेंट को एडमिट करने के बाद सस्पेक्टेड कोविड लिखा जाता है स्वैप लिया जाए ऐसा एडविजरी दी जाती है आइसोलेशन वार्ड में रखा जाए ऐसी एडविजरी दी जाती है और उनके मृत्यु के बाद उसको नॉन कोविड इस प्रकार से ट्रीट करके सस्पेक्टेड कोविड लिखा जाता है क्योंकि उनका स्वैब ही नहीं लिया जाता सौ केसेस ऐसी हैं कि जिसमें इस प्रकार से बॉडी रिलीज कर दी गई है क्योंकि इनको नॉन कोविड माना जाता है तो घर वालों को न क्वारंटीन किया जाता है न उनकी कोई टेस्ट की जाती है आई वॉन्ट टू कनेक्ट टू माई कॉलिग साहिल जोशी और महाराष्ट्र ब्यूरो चीफ ही इज ज्वाइनिंग अस लाइफ फ्रॉम मुंबई साहिल विल यू टेक अस थ्रू द वेरी लेटेस्ट कमिंग इन बिकॉज इट सीम्स ऑफ all the biggest flashpoint continues to be Dharavi and Govandi. Absolutely. In fact, uh, I, uh, my sources uh, from this team, two teams have been sent to Maharashtra. The one team, of course, has come to Mumbai because Mumbai remains to be the hotspot. If you look at the numbers, the maximum numbers, more than 80% numbers are from Mumbai uh, if, you, uh, if, if we are only talking about the Maharashtra numbers. And in Mumbai, the maximum numbers are coming from those areas which are now uh, becoming a contamin uh, contaminated zones which has been declared by the Mumbai and uh, uh, Mumbai administration. And mainly now the, uh, the major risk remains at places like Dharavi and Govandi, and that's what the central teams have identified. The first containment zone of uh, Varli Kolivada is now uh, in, on the path of recovery. That's what they felt because the number of cases are, have started decreasing from these areas. At the same time, the number of recoveries have started increasing from these areas. But if you compare it with Dharavi, the Varli Kolivada is a very minuscule, small slum. So uh, 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 if you compare it vis a vis Dharavi, uh, the comparison will not be appropriate because Dharavi is a large slum, 7.5 lakh population uh, spread across uh, uh, many acres. And that's what uh, creates a problem in a place like Dharavi. And that's why the central team specifically visited Dharavi. Now, there are multiple options which have been thought of. The first option which has already been worked out on ground is basically to do a mass level screening specifically of those um, uh, you know, who are the high risk contacts of the people who have been found positive. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the area has been completely under lockdown. Uh, but the second thing which uh, is being thought of is basically to shift uh, the population from there uh, in the open spaces, like on the open ground, uh, 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 constructing a tent and keep those people there. But that will be uh, another big, uh, 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 you know, work which the authorities will need to do. Whether it will be practical at this uh, juncture, at this stage, it's something which uh, the government is thinking of. So various options are being thought of. The mass mass test. Uh, might be conducted there. Right now, the center has stopped uh, the rapid testing. In Maharashtra, the rapid testing hasn't happened before, uh, despite the Maharashtra is testing at the highest level. Uh, but if the rapid test start, maybe that option might be worked out uh, in Dharavi. The other option which has been thought by the government, for which the government is still thinking, because there are multiple uh, thoughts behind, uh, behind this, and uh, the contradictory thoughts are also coming forward, whether to give HCQs uh, 
um, uh, to the people who are living in that area to boost the immunity, whether that can also be done. So there are multiple things which has been thought of at this point of time. Uh, but one thing is very clear that in place like Mumbai, uh, the testing needs to be with the protocol because that is where the opposition parties, even the central team, uh, is bit uh, of a suspicion. They have a bit of a suspicion uh, that uh, if the test protocol given by the ICMR is actually being followed or not, right. because uh, you know the leader of opposition had also raised this point, which we had just shown that uh, uh, the dead, uh, the people who are dead. Uh, are not being tested for COVID. So that is something which is a very serious uh, allegation which needs to be clarified by the Maharashtra government at this point of time. Okay. Uh, but uh, if the Maharashtra comes back to normal, the Mumbai and Pune needs to come back to normal. Uh, otherwise, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a long fight, what I can see at this point of time. All right. Just sheer, by the sheer number, what we are uh, no, uh, witnessing at this point of time. Well, I just hope the import of the number stems and uh, that's uh, what we hope happens in days to come. Appreciate you joining us, Sahil. We'll keep coming back to you for more updates. I just want to now move on where the central government today came up with an ordinance to shield health workers against attacks. As per this ordinance, the attack on health workers will be considered a cognizable non bailable offence. Investigation in such cases will have to be completed within 30 days and trial in a year's time. Accused assaulters will face imprisonment from three months up to five years and a penalty ranging from 50,000 to rupees 2 lakhs. In case of grievous injury, the ordinance lays down imprisonment from six months to seven years and penalty ranging from one lakh rupees to five lakh rupees. Prime Minister Modi in a tweet said that ensuring safety of saviors is government's priority. This comes after the Indian Medical Association expressed concern over rising cases of attacks on health workers. IMA has meanwhile withdrawn its call for candlelight protest after assurances of safety from Home Minister Amit Shah. The ordinance proposes that within 30 days the investigation will be over. Within one year the decision of the case will be, the final decision will come. And the punishment ranges from three months to five years and fine from 50,000 rupees to 2 lakh rupees. And in severe cases, where severe, serious injuries, grievous injuries have taken place. The punishment starts from six months to seven years and fines start from one lakh rupees to five lakh rupees. I want to connect to my colleague Polomi Saha who's joining us with the very latest Polomi. You know, clearly there have been enough incidents that have prompted uh, the government to actually come up with an ordinance and change a law which was over 123 year old when it comes down uh, to protecting our saviors. Absolutely, the need for this uh, law, law, this ordinance was imminent because of uh, the cons uh, constant incidents of attacks and um, harassment of medical, of medical uh, professionals and today after the Home Minister assured the medical fraternity that he would do everything within his wherewithal to protect the medical fraternity, the cabinet then passed this and promulgated this, or this ordinance which basically it's cognizant offence to attack or harass medical professionals. Something that, thing that was problem uh, with your audio and video feed. We'll try and connect that and come back to you later. Meanwhile, I just want to move on. Now there's been, like I said earlier, the went to the attack on our Corona warriors. A violent mob went on a rampage in Aligarh, attacking police personnel for doing their job. This ruckus began after the police asked vegetable vendors to shut shop in Aligarh's Bhujpura post operational hours were over. The violent mob pelted stones on the cops, leaving one cop injured. The market has now been closed. Earlier, authorities had permitted Bujbara Vegetable Market to function between 6 to 10 in the morning. Remember, this is not the first incident. Earlier, cops were also attacked in Bihar's Motihari, Rajasthan's Tonk and Punjab's Patiala. <laughs> All right, now this could be pretty much a small silver lining on India and the world's fight against coronavirus. In India alone, now five states have been permitted by the ICMR to use the convalescent plasma therapy for treatment of COVID-19 patients. Now this treatment can serve as a stopgap until drugs and vaccines are available. 
The first person who has administered the plasma therapy on compassionate grounds at the Max Hospital in Sarkit has shown positive results. He was recently weaned off the ventilator. The patient is a 49-year-old male from Delhi who had tested COVID positive on April 4th. Meanwhile, Karnataka, Gujarat, Punjab and Kerala are among other states that have received permission to use this therapy. Relatives actually came and requested us that uh, we would want you to try whatever experimental therapies are possible. So we constituted, we called the ethics committee urgently and they approved it as a life-saving treatment for this patient. The next part was then to arrange a uh, donor. Uh, this uh, donor is normally a person who has recovered from COVID infection at least two weeks after the two negative tests. So the family got in touch with somebody who agreed to become a donor. So this lady had recovered from COVID infection three weeks back and had tested negative twice three weeks back. And she voluntarily agreed to come and get the testing done and be uh, a donor. So uh, of course, then she was run through the normal protocol of testing for hepatitis B, C and HIV and a repeat COVID testing. Once all that came negative and she was a healthy donor, she had no history of any other medical problems and she voluntarily agreed to donate. She was called, connected to the machine uh, to collect plasma. Uh, it took us two hours uh, to, uh, for this process of plasma separation. We take, took out around 400 ml of plasma uh, and then uh, gave 200 ml of plasma to this patient on 14th night, 14th April. Post that, over the next two, three days, the patient's condition showed positive trend. Uh, most of his blood parameters started improving. His ventilatory requirement came down. Uh, his blood pressure settled. His consciousness level improved. And on 18th, that Saturday morning, we were able to wean him off the ventilator and get him out of the ventilator. Post that, for a day, he was kept on a non-invasive NIV uh, BiPAP, and then after that on oxygen. Uh, meanwhile, we tested his COVID status, and he has had two negative reports. So he has been declared free of coronavirus now. All right. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization chief Tedros is under attack after he posted a very cryptic tweet on the coronavirus pandemic. Tedros has been posting one word tweet since U.S. President Donald Trump threatened to stop the funding to WHO, accusing the organization of favoring China. Here's a full report. A single word in a cryptic tweet. Is the chief of the World Health Organization seeking forgiveness? Or is Dr. Tedros saying he forgives those attacking him from around the world? Make what you will of the high-profile WHO Director General's tweet, but you must know that forgive is only the latest in a long list of such single-word strikes. The tweets began with US President Trump angrily seizing funding to the WHO on allegations that Tedros had used the organization to shield China in the COVID-19 war. The World Health Organization receives vast amounts of money from the United States and uh, we pay for a majority, the biggest portion of their money. And they were wrong. They've been wrong about a lot of things. And they had a lot of information early, and they didn't want to do very... They seemed to be very China-centric. And we're going to put a hold on money spent to the WHO. We're going to put a very powerful hold on it, and we're going to see. It's a great thing if it works, but when they call every shot wrong, that's no good. The focus of all political parties should be to save their people. Please don't politicize this virus. It exploits the differences you have at the national level. If you don't want many more body bags, then you refrain from politicizing it. Ever since Dr. Tedros has occasionally tweeted, compassion, honesty, unity, humanity, solidarity, forgive, and stronger together. Could this be Dr. Tedros's way of calming himself while he faces attacks from every side? I sent a tweet with a single word, humility. Some people asked me why. COVID-19 is reminding us how vulnerable we are, how connected we are, and how dependent we are on each other. Scientific and public health tools are essential, but so are humility 
and kindness. Virtually every tweet by Dr. Tedros has been met with mocking sarcasm, a manifestation of anger over reports that the WHO has played lackey to China while the world has bled. As global blame piles up at Dr. Tedros's door in the COVID-19 war, don't expect this Twitter defences to stop anytime soon. Bureau Report, India Today. All right, the latest news break right now coming in. The Amarnath Yatra 2020 has been cancelled due to the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. That's the latest coming in. Now, the Amarnath Yatra was to begin from 21st of June and now stands cancelled until further notice. That's the latest that is coming in. A lot of religious congregations across the world, not just in India, stand cancelled as we speak due to the wake of this pandemic. And Amarnath Yatra is the latest right now that stands cancelled due to the COVID outbreak in the country. The Yatra, as I told you, was to start in late June. All right, with that news break, I want to move on to one segment that we follow through every day on 7 at 7, which is where we bust certain claims and facts that have been going about. The latest coming in on that is that there is a claim making the rounds on social media on WhatsApp messages that the government has launched an Indian alternative to video conferencing app Zoom. The fact is the government has launched no such app. Even though there are lots of issues with Zoom, but the government on its account has not launched any other app, so this is false, don't fall for it. The other claim that you shouldn't fall for would suggest the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has packed relief material. Well, the video is an old video and has absolutely no correction to coronavirus, so false again. With that, it's a wrap on this bulletin of 7 at 7. We'll, of course, see you tomorrow. But for further news and updates, do log on to indiatoday.in. Thank you for joining us. Up next is Info Corona with our consulting editor, Rajdeep Saldesai. Hi, everyone. Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.